state of Tamil Nadu has achieved our Millennium Development Goals. We four of us will be deliberating in the conference. Myself is Professor Malarvidi, uh, the Vice Principal and Pediatric HOD of PSG College of Nursing, uh, who will be deliberating on the introduction part and uh, neonatal component. And uh, Professor Sri Ranjani will become uh, explaining about the maternal component. And Ms. Jonisha will be doing about HIV and Narayani will be telling about the schemes. PSG College of Nursing is an ISO certified 9008-2000 institution and it is affiliated to the Health University of the state of Tamil Nadu. It is called as MGR Medical University. And as we all know, India is a fast developing country with an area of 3.2 million kilometers square and one third of the area of USA and it is the biggest democracy in the world among the diverse cultural practices in all spheres of life. Its population of uh, 1.21 billion is second only to that of China. So when we look at uh, India, Tamil, uh, we belong to the state of Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is the southernmost part of uh, India which has 32 districts uh, within it and it is the seventh most populous state in India. And 44% of the state's population live in urban areas and the special features of Tamil Nadu with related to health context is it has the lowest fertility rate in India with an average of 1.7 children born for each woman and uh, which has been contributing to the healthy health indices of uh, especially in relation to our MDG 4 and 5 and the literacy rate is 73.45 percentage and the sex ratio is 987 per thousand population. And this is the map of uh, Tamil Nadu. We belong to Coimbatore, the western part of uh, Tamil Nadu state. And the Coimbatore is an urban tier 2 city next to Chennai which is the capital of uh, Tamil Nadu. And this Tamil Nadu also has a very health, uh, healthy health indices and there are 997 females for every 1000 males and it is the more, uh, it is one of the urban states in Tamil, India. And to so just review about the Millennium Development Goal 4 and 5, the 4 is to reduce the childhood mortality and 5 is uh, to improve the maternal mortality. To achieve this Millennium Development Goal, in 2005, the special initiative called as National Rural Health Mission was launched by the Government of India and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And it is a new initiative especially to target the rural poor population towards a holistic health care package to, and also to monitor the effective uh, uh, functioning of the mechanism and thereby we are able to achieve the MDG 4 and 5 and other This is a brief uh, overview about the various functions of uh, NRHM that is the rural health, national rural health mission which targets especially towards maternal and health, newborn health and other surveillance and other health monitoring system also. This slide shows about the various cadres of health workers especially designed for this NRHM uh, thing to achieve the Millennium Developmental Goals and there, are, there has been some change in the designations and they have been specially trained in this and these people serve the rural populations because the mortality rate was found to be high in the rural population. And these are our current uh, infant and maternal mortality rate against the MDG goals 2015 and in the 12-5 year plan between 2012 and 17 and Tamil Nadu to talk about it has very healthy indices and already it is far ahead about the MDG 4 and 5 and uh, in India it is a uh, little higher but yet we have a long way to go. And coming to maternal mortality rate also already Tamil Nadu has achieved uh, the MDG 4 and yet there are some things which has to be corrected. So India overall has a high uh, maternal mortality rate uh, with respect to the MDG 5. 
And now, this uh, screen engineer will deliberate on uh, mental and health. Hi, I am Sri Ranjini. I am going to tell you about the what are the initiatives to improve the maternal health in India. When we are seeing the healthcare cadre in Tamil Nadu, our Tamil Nadu is divided into three levels, primary care, second care and tertiary care. Primary care, the care is given to the public health center, rural health center and the secondary care is given in the district hospital and the tertiary care is working as a referral one. This is the trend in, in India about the maternal mortality. Through the new initiatives of RCH and NRHM, there is a marked decrease in the maternal mortality from 1990 to 2015. We can see by the introduction of these initiatives, there is a sharp decline in the maternal mortality. That is, it has come to 140 in the year 2015. When we are taking in Tamil Nadu, through these initiatives, it suddenly there is a reduction from 2001 to 2012, that is from 145 to 73. These are the programs we have introduced to improve the maternal health. Mainly in the beginning we have started the reproductive and childbirth program. After that this was modified into National Rural Health Mission. Now in the 12th 5 year plan they have started RM and CH programs along with the adolescent. By the introduction of this RG research program, after 2001, there is a sudden decrease in the maternal mortality rates. We can see it in through the graphs. So, in short, the maternal mortality ratio in developing region is still 15 times higher than the developed regions. India is a developing country. By the introduction of these programs, there is a sudden antenatal care is increased from 63% in 1990 to 81% in 2011. This is the maternal mortality ratio. There are two targets are there to reduce by three quarters between 19 and 2014 the maternal mortality ratio and universal access to all the mothers to reproductive health. These are the important causes of maternal death in, in India. In this graph you can see that the main maternal mortality is mainly due to hemorrhagic disorders that is 25 percentage constitute hemorrhagic disorders and 20 percentage the contributes to eclampsia and the other causes are including sepsis and safe abortion obstructed labor. In short the, in this graph, we can see the different and uh, maternal cause, death cause analysis through the interventions like improving the skills of the PhD staff that is skilled with train and emergency obstructive management, refresher training for village health nurses and uh, delivering cash incentive to village health nurses. There is a sudden decrease in maternal mortality and improving the maternal health. These are the initiatives India is adopted from 2000 year onwards. It includes emergency obstetric and newborn care within 30 minutes reach and establishment of basic emergency obstetric and newborn care and PHCs at rate of one per block and audit of every maternal death for identifying the circumstances leading to the death and prevention of similar death in future. And there are some schemes are available which gives cash incentive to mothers to promote the maternal health and to give the institutional deliveries and improve the family planning and improve the diet. In, in, it includes the antenatal, intranatal and postnatal care and establishment of a round the clock delivery to all PSCs and establishment of urban PSCs. This is the new uh, scheme introduced by the Family Welfare Department of India that is reproductive, maternal and neonatal childhood and including the adolescent. The purpose of providing an understanding of the comprehensive approach to improve child survival and safe motherhood and operational guidance to implement this approach during the next phase of NRHM.
12th five year plan only include this RMNS strategies. Our aim is to reduce the maternal mortality ratio to 100 per 1 lakh live births by 2017 and reduction total fertility rate to 2.1 by 20. And our objectives through this is to improve the maternal health and accessible to family planning, school health programs, child health programs, and concentrating on handicapped children, care of children, special settings like daycare center. Regarding the obstetric care through this program, they have promoted the institutional deliveries to the cash incentives and skilled attendance at delivery and strengthening of rubber system and pre assist to manage common obstetric complications to ensure access to safe blood at the district hospital and post rubber units. And emergency obstetric care include delivery services in PHCs, medical termination of pregnancy, control of respiratory tract infection and STD, and immunization. This is a continuum of care adopted by India. Through antenatal care, we are compelling on three antenatal visits. Three antenatal visits. Three antenatal visits to tetanus, toxoid injection, and anti doses of iron and folic acid tablets. And intrapartum care, it includes institutional deliveries, 76 percentage and 3 percentage home deliveries by an skilled birth attendance, increase in cash incentive for institutional deliveries, the percentage of birth assisted by a doctor or a nurse trained in emergency or essential obstetrical care went up gradually. According to that, the new data is there is a sudden decrease in 79 percentage in 2009. Postnatal care is those women who delivered in institutions or received from doctor or AM within two days of delivering at home are considered to have received postnatal care. After the increase in hospital deliveries under the Janusuryakshayojana scheme of the NRXM, is that mothers get discharged very soon after delivery after receiving their cash incentives for delivering in a health facility. And we are improving the family planning where uh, by ASHA workers. They are going to the rural area and counseling the mothers to adopt the family planning methods. And they are distributing the different contraceptive methods for family planning. And for male sterilization, the government provides an incentive of plus to 1,200 for males. And we are giving special training to health workers in all the obstacle emergencies. Then the Suryaksha Yodhana scheme is the new scheme proposed by the India government. Through this, we are giving, promoting institutional delivery by giving cash incentives to the family of this 1400 and to the worker who is going along with that, we are giving special incentives like 600 rupees. This is the beneficiaries of the Suraksha Yojana scheme. Uh, the, the beneficiaries include pregnant women of all sections of the society in rural and urban area. Up to two live birth, we are giving this cash incentives. For institution deliveries, we are giving to 700 rupees. And for home deliveries, we are giving 500 rupees. And the features of this way include early registration, micro birth planning, referral transport, Ambulance services are available, institutional birth are promoting, post delivery visit and reporting, family planning and counseling, and behavior change communication to promote the institutional deliveries. This is the mother package under the general suryakshi scheme. For rural and urban area, we are giving cash incentives for institutional delivery, home delivery, and then ASHA workers. Other initiatives to improve the maternal health are to prevent the complications of deliveries like PPH and if there is an eclampsia, we have started blood storage centers in all the PHCs and we are providing free diet for antenatal mothers visiting the antenatal clinics and postnatal mothers in all the public health centers. Other initiatives, because the mothers mostly in India, they are driving in tribal ladies. 20 tribal mobile medical units reach out to the interior ladies. And they have started birth waiting room in seven in public health centers in the foothills of tribal villages. 
giving feeding and dietary charges for several days for antenatal mothers even from the admission after the discharge we are giving free food then diet and for all the mothers and for one attender for 34 tribal pcs are provided and for ashas we have given special training and placed in 15 tribal district and in uh, difficulty in accessible areas this is about the initiatives to improve the maternal health in, in India. Now, Professor Malavari, Madam, she will discuss about what are the initiatives to reduce the child mortality, that is the millennial development goals. Good morning once again. With regard to the neonatal mortality rate, uh, there is a special focus by the government of India uh, when we look back, the under 5 mortality rate, it reminds us uh, 52 and with an IMR of 42 and an NMR of 29. And there is a high contribution of NMR to all these under 5 IMR and uh, unitary. So, 56% of NMR is uh, under 5 mortality rate and 70% uh, of neonatal mortality rate uh, contributes to the infant mortality rate and uh, 80% uh, of infant mortality rate contributes towards the uh, under 5 mortality rate due to uh, high neonatal mortality rate. That's why there's a special focus for uh, RMNCH plus A, neonatal component special emphasis is given. So when we review the neonatal mortality with the details which is showing uh, that 70% of the neonatal deaths and uh, 56 percent contributes for the IMR and 56 percent of the neonatal deaths contributes for the under 5 mortality rate. And this graph shows against the current IMR of uh, 42 percent, 29 is the neonatal mortality rate and within this 29 the major uh, time period during which the neonatal deaths is occurring is at the yearly neonatal period, that is at the first week of birth. So 23 contributes among the thousand for early neonatal death, that is from the first day to seventh day. Among that, among the first two days is the highest one. And this only 6% contribute towards the late neonatal mortality rate. This is a graph about the various uh, neonatal mortality rates in the states of Tamil Nadu, uh, sorry, India. Uh, against the index of 29, Tamil Nadu stands second in achieving the high, uh, I mean, low neonatal mortality rate next to Kerala, which is our neighboring state. And there are some states which has uh, higher neonatal indices, that is uh, 39 and uh, 38, that is in Madhya, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha, which contributes highly towards the highest neonatal mortality rate in India. And when we compare the neonatal mortality rate in the urban and rural area, neonatal mortality rate in the uh, rural contributes to the majority of the thing in all the states. So Tamil Nadu has a um, rural neonatal mortality rate of 18 as compared to 11 in case of urban areas against the national index of 23 and 16, 23 in the uh, urban and 16 in the rural areas. The various causes of neonatal deaths in India is majority equally preterm and infections. These two causes contribute to the major uh, percentage of neonatal deaths and next stands the birth asphyxia and the 5% on other causes and 8% towards congenital malformations. So based on these major causes, special schemes have been initiated by the government of India to achieve and to reduce these causes. There are many evidence-based inter interventions to reduce the neo neonatal deaths uh, like starting from immediately after birth to reduce and to prevent birth asphyxia, effective warming and resuscitation and uh, skilled birth attendants have been intensively trained in resuscitation 
and uh, to prevent infections uh, uh, some medicines can be prescribed and uh, they can administer to the uh, newborns without any uh, physician uh, so they had been given the uh, rights to uh, administer this drug and then to maintain norm kmc and birth spacing maternal nutrition which has been deliberated earlier and uh, malaria control and antenatal corticosteroid and treatment of bacteria all this has been and nrp is the first initiative uh, various organizations such as the neonatal uh, national neonatology forum of india indian academy of pediatrics and the iann indian association of neonatal uh, nurses has been uh, uh, concentrating in this area to train and intensively monitor and uh, launch many special programs uh, a neonatal resuscitation program of a indian model on first minute of the birth which is very crucial especially to reduce the birth related aspects and other initiatives are uh, nssk that is navadi shishu suraksha karyakriya for basic newborn care which com comprises of the resuscitation and warmth and so many other things this is in the government level at the private level it is called as first golden minute project in all the private hospitals uh, the healthcare workers are trained in this this was launched in the year uh, 2009 on 15 september and uh, these are the components of nssk that is by iap the nssk manual of gois and there is another important uh, special program called as imnca that is uh, uh, a neonatal component is there integrated management of neonatal and uh, child in, uh, intensive nursing this improves on three components called as uh, improve the healthcare worker skills and the health system to function effectively and family and community practices these three are interlinked to each other so that the uh, all the health practices are received to the grassroots level without any defects so this is a specially devised uh, scheme or uh, innovative idea which has been uh, implemented throughout the country in all the states which has been uh, effectively contributing to reduce the neonatal mortality rate and in the special features of imnca includes a color coded strategy that is based on the condition of the child you can uh, recognize if the child is in pink classification child needs more attention and even reference services also and yellow classification indicates that uh, treatment at the healthcare center and uh, it can even home care treatment can be provided and the green classification child needs no medicine and they can advise to go home when they approach the health center another concept called as facility based newborn care is a concept which has been introduced and according to that uh, there are special sick newborn units uh, uh, 12 to 20 beds for every 460 and stabilization units four beds per population of 1640 and 13400 at the primary health center and community health center and at the district ho uh, hospital this primary health center is uh, both in urban and rural areas and community health center is further uploaded one with 30 bed facilities and there is special focus for the maternal and neonatal uh, uh, areas and there are specially trained uh, uh, doctors or physicians also to tackle this uh, maternal and newborn issues this is a glimpse of uh, facility based newborn care manual and uh, imnci that is facility based uh, fimnci it is called as integrated management of neonatal and childhood illness modules various modules have been prepared and the healthcare workers have been trained on this these are the facilities uh, in the indian public health system newborn corners with the uh, warmers and uh, resuscitation facilities and for emergency transport one not eight ambulance system and there have been staffs who have been specially uh, trained to resuscitate and safely transport the newborn also and uh, the asha workers as uh, discussed already they will give sms reminder for uh, community and facility follow up so that uh, 
they will visit the home and the mothers are made available when they visit on the day of follow up and newborn scheduled days follow up and there is another concept called as home based newborn care where the asha worker visits the home whenever there is a newborn on all these mentioned days and uh, there are special systems to monitor that the asha has visited and she has recorded the weight of the baby uh, ensures that the baby is immunized and uh, there is a, a, a facilitator for her also that she effectively carries out these works and the baby is healthy at 42 days of birth and uh, this hpnc focuses towards linking of facility towards the home care so uh, people are uh, healthcare workers at the doorstep of the uh, delivered mothers and they seek uh, thereby they ensure that the well being of the baby and there is extra care for low birth weight baby and sick baby and after discharge also there is effective monitoring in case of sick babies and access treatment to the six neonates by administering antibiotics and uh, handling neonatal uh, sepsis and jaundice and so many other condition also the families are educated on dan danger signs and referral services and this is indian association of neonatal organization uh, nurses which is a special organization to which works for newborn health and uh, trains various status of uh, people on uh, various aspects of newborn health next uh, is janisha will uh, talk about hiv in pregnant women and children good morning to you all so i'll be dealing with hiv in pregnancy so as many initiatives have been taken by the indian government to reduce the maternal and infant mortality rate the hiv is also playing a main role in the maternal and the infant mortality rate so many initiatives have been taken to reduce this hiv prevalence among the pregnant women so here we can see the graph regarding the 15 to 20 years 24 years of hiv prevalence among the pregnant women so in 2005 we can see that it is 0.9 so it has been reduced so we can see the marked difference in the reduction in the hiv prevalence among the pregnant women so in this graph we can see that the uh, hiv prevalence among the antenatal clinic attendees so here here also we can see a marked reduction in that so the highest we can see in 2001 is 1.13 and it has been reduced to 0.13 now so many uh, approaches have been taken by the naco which is the national aids control organization so they say that globally 33 million people are living with hiv and in india we can see 2.47 million are approximately according to the naco survey so they have taken some four approaches that uh, primary prevention is needed and prevent unintended pregnancies in hiv positive pregnant women and to take intervention to prevent uh, maternal transmission to child transmission in hiv positive pregnant women and care and treatment of hiv positive mothers and infants so these are the four approaches taken by the naco so this is the first line art uh, regimen which is given by the naco so they say that uh, without intervention 15 to 25 percentage is transmitted in the developed countries so we can see in the developing countries that it is 25 to 45 percentage so they have given this first line art treatment they are given so the first antenatal visit itself the couples are screened for hiv so previously in all we will be saying the ptct uh, mtct which is maternal to child transmission now it has been transformed to ptct which is parent to child transmission so both the couples are screened for the hiv and if the if the mother is positive so they will be preferring for this art line treatment so the preferred one here is the uh, Uh, a zero within 300 mg plus lamivudin 150 mg and nevirapine 200 mg totally they will be giving otherwise alternatively they will be go for the tenofovir lamivudin and nevirapine so why they are giving the alternative treatment is zero within is having a side effect of anemia so as india is a developing country so we can see many of the pregnant women in the anemic state 
So we will be going for this alternative therapy. So this is the first line ART regimen. So in this we can see that in the antenatal period we will be starting uh, this ART regimen in 14 weeks as soon as possible at least at 28 week of pregnancy. And we see that this heart treatment that is highly active antiretroviral therapy of the three drugs is given in the antenatal period. So in uh, intrapartum period continuous this prophylaxis will be given. And before the onset of the labor, within 4 hours, we have to give the nivirpin 200 mg, which is compulsory. And also the vaginal cleaning with 0.25% cloth hexidin is a compulsory one. So in the postpartum, we will be continuing with the prophylaxis and all the infants, uh, because they will be exposed to the breastfeeding. As India is a developing country, the mothers are uh, asked to give the breast milk for the baby. So this is for the regimen for the neonate. For the newborn, the nevirapin 20 mg per kg within 72 hours will be given, which is compulsory one. And for six weeks, the baby has to be taken the regimen. So if uh, the baby is less than 2.5 kg, 15 mg once daily they have to take. Or if the baby is more than 2.5 kg, so 10 mg once daily is given. So this is the NACO which is given these details of regimens. So many organizations has been initiated in the India to reduce this, uh, to go uh, with the Millennium Development Code. So this is the Society of Midwife India which is uh, useful in the strengthening midwifery and for safe motherhood. So which was established in 2000 and main mission of this is to strengthen the midwifery and enable midwives and achieve safe motherhood. So this mainly advocates for the safe, skilled and sensitive to women. So this is the one of the uh, society uh, which is found in India. Good morning. And now we are going to see about the government of Tamil Nadu and India initiated the schemes to reduce the child mortality and improve the maternal health. The first one is the Tamil Nadu model. A cash payment of rupees uh, 6000 is offered to the poor woman for their nutrition and delivery related expenses. Next, the emergency ambulance. The number is 108. The, uh, all over the Tamil Nadu and in the uh, national level, the emergency services is uh, provided for 24 hours or 7 days. Next is the other schemes. Dr. Mutulakshmi Reddy scheme. This is that uh, Tamil, Nadu, uh, Tamil Nadu government has started a scheme from the year 1927 uh, to uh, cash incentives of rupees uh, 12,000 is given as a free installment during antenatal, internatal and postnatal period provided the mother is uh, taken antenatal visits, uh, HIV, uh, HIV screening and uh, hemoglobin monitoring and blood pressure monitoring. Second one is the birth companion scheme. It is popularly known as Yashoda scheme. A companion for the mother is uh, is provided for the mother. Next one is the girl child protection scheme. Uh, it is a scheme uh, provided for to increase the uh, girl child education and to reduce the gender discrimination. Next one is Mughalu Ramamardam Amayar marriage assistance scheme. It is provided for the uh, assist, uh, scheme incentives for the parent of the bride. Next one is mobile medical team scheme. This uh, pro, The services provided by the scheme is antenatal services, referral services, uh, then um, school, uh, school health services, uh, sanitation and uh, all these services, uh, emergency and essential obstacle care. The comprehensive emergency obstetric and newborn care centers, these are already dealt by ma'am. Next one is National Nutrition Anemia Control Program. This program was uh, for mainly uh, for providing uh, iron and folic acid supplementation free of cost for both pregnant women and adolescent girls. Next one is vitamin A supplementation program. The vitamin A prophylaxis is provided for both uh, the children under 5 from 9 months of age. Next one is family welfare program. The family welfare program was established by the government of India and this provides the contraceptives and the property insertion free of cost and also vasectomy and tubectomy. For the vasectomy, the amount of rupees 1200 is provided for every vasectomy and rupees 500 is provided for tubectomy. Next one is the antenatal diet program. In the antenatal diet program, the village health nurse uh, cooks a diet, antenatal diet for the pregnant woman and she provides it. The next one is 
the mdg goal 5 the 109 per 1 lakh live birds and mdg 4 is 27 per 1000 live birds we are count down to 2015 begins next one as a sum up the antenatal care the asha training for the villages and upgrade upgradation of the primary health care centers then e mamta is a online online tracking system started by the gujarat gujarat government Next one is the POPSI. It is a federation of uh, Obstetric and Gynecological Society India. The initiatives are uh, the primary health centers, sub-centers and district hospital, the emergency obstetrical care and certificate course for the medical offices are provided for conducting safe abortion, conducting a maternal mortality audit and national eclampsia register. To conclude, at various global platforms, India has reaffirmed its commitment to make every effort towards achieving the million development goals 4 and 5. The national call to action, the government with all its partners with, will together launch the strategic roadmap for accelerating child survival and improving the mental health in the new, near future and beyond 2015. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. I'm sure that um, everyone is actually quite impressed at the reduction in maternal mortality and neonatal mortality. Probably many of us listening to you um, can't even imagine a mortality rate like that. Um, so I'm just going to ask if there's any questions that have come up. You are working very, very hard as Sarah says. Yes, yes. <laughs> I guess one of the things that I was wondering was, um, are there any issues that have arisen from promoting birth within the institutions? Has that led to any problems? Uh, about the various schemes you are telling? So? I, I just wonder if women are being encouraged to birth in a hospital, then mm -hmm. has that brought about problem? Like increased caesarean or increased um, forces? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Caesarean and forceps doesn't contribute to uh, the major uh, issue. Uh, there are various other reasons for uh, caesarean and uh, forceps. Maybe Sri Renjini will be able to tell you about that. For caesarean, uh, the main reasons are post-term post, post deliveries and any obstacle emergency like the cord prolapse and cord around the neck, any bleeding in the pregnancy. These are the complications which will lead into the cesarean deliveries in India. And uh, Jane, uh, as the student engineer told, there are other, uh, as you asked about the issue, there are some social issues like nowadays uh, many women doesn't want to go undergo the rigorous process of labor. So related to that, especially in the private set uh, hospital, many women opt to go for cesarean and uh, that has been on uh, sometimes cesarean has become a commercial uh, this thing also just to reduce the pain of labor. So that is the issue. But other than that, it has nothing to do with uh, our uh, MDG4. Uh, Unless otherwise it is a real indication which has been decided by the obstetrician. It's very interesting. I also wondered, um, you showed the statistics for Kerala next yes. to you. Why is that so different to Tamil Nadu? Yes, yes, yes. Kerala is her neighboring state and there the literacy rate of the people are 100%. And uh, the health indices are uh, mainly it's a direct influencing factor which reduces the mortality rates. So that has been a, a very good factor. Literacy has been contributing and it has been found to be effectively reducing all this thing and people are much aware about the uh, health uh, care and they seek health care promptly. That is the thing I would say. And uh, Tamil Nadu also equally uh, stands next to Kerala. That is why we are able to achieve our Millennium uh, Development Goals far ahead than the other states. 
and there is a star star contrast if you see the northern states and all the literacy rates and also cultural uh, practices also plays a major role in uh, uh, for example the home deliveries and care of newborns they have many traditional practices which causes sometimes death of the newborn and even uh, maternal mortality now oh, thank you that's really interesting um you know, I think um, we can see the value of education there, yes, yes. you know, it's fantastic. Um, I can see that some people have put a question up. Sarah has asked, are there any barriers to putting in place some of these initi initiatives? Uh, have you had any barriers? Yes, of course, uh, there are some barriers. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the system doesn't work. The people, they, especially in the rural area and all, acceptance among the people, some schemes and all. As I said already, literacy where we can explain the literate people and thereby we are able to achieve. Once again, uh, people who are illiterate and uh, it's very difficult to uh, overcome their uh, cultural practices and food facts and so many other things and uh, thereby they are, uh, they are not willing to change. Sometimes this has been found to be a barrier uh, in implementing or uh, reaching these schemes and various uh, initiatives to reach the end users. Thank you. That's very interesting. Um, I noticed that Sarah's put up a, a comment. She wondered if the main issue that contributes to the high postpartum hemorrhage rate mm -hmm. Uh, factors contributing what would, to what would be yes yes we'll be able to tell the causes for postpartum hemorrhage is mainly due to anemia so this anemia is mainly uh, especially in the adolescent age also and one more thing which can be correlated in the Indian context is this uh, adolescent marriage that is marrying at a very young age and uh, right from that period onwards they are anemic that is why our government of India has launched a new scheme called, that is in the 12th 5 year plan it has introduced a concept called as RMNCH plus A. This A includes adolescents, so there is a special focus for adolescents and uh, they give special supplementation of iron and folic acid and every month they are monitored for their uh, regular uh, menstrual uh, periods and uh, it is ensured that uh, the adolescent doesn't have uh, anemia and uh, this anemia is corrected at the uh, adolescent level itself. So, and we have blood storage centers in all the PHCs to prevent the PH disorders. That's very interesting. Well, I would like to thank you on behalf of everyone here. It's been a fantastic presentation and you've covered so much um, ground for us. It's been really very interesting. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a very good opportunity to share our uh, thoughts and uh, it was indeed a very delighting and good experience for us. We had also that from our college and from our side. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'll just move on to the final slides. Um, I'm sure that everyone is wishing you very good luck with the um, challenges that are ahead. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you.